Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to another episode of Trailmakers. And today I'm finally going to try to build my own ornithopter uh, using sails for wings. Very much like this. However, probably not nearly as good because this is literally the best ornithopter I've seen in this game so far. And um, this is what inspired me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to build my own ornithopter. Don't really know what I'm doing, but if this thing can do it, I can do it worse. And uh, one thing I missed with this, by the way, um, is that apparently this has a walking mode. If you hold shift, it walks too. So it's got all kinds of fun functions. You know what? I can even hold space and then, yeah, now we can, <laughs> we can walk like a parrot across the ground. So this thing was even better than I even thought it was. And I already thought it was the best. So what's better than the best? Bester, I guess. Not to be confused with Buster. Okay, so I should iterate uh, before I start building this thing that I am not an engineer at all. I just happen to play games that have me engineering things and I just figure it out as I go. That's kind of the fun in these games is it encourages you to do your own engineering and trial and error to build work and creations. And that's what I, I, I like the creativity in that. Okay, so I've thought a little bit, just a little bit, I've thought about what I want to do with this. And I think I want to go dragonfly style. So I want to have two sets of wings that are going to be flapping offset from each other and I'm hoping that's gonna create an interesting balance with the flapping motion so that maybe they'll cancel each other out so it might be a bit of a smoother ride instead of bobbing up and down as you flap in, into the wind. So I'm anticipating that I'm going to need logic so I'm gonna go ahead and put some logic gates on this thing just to start off with. These can be used for whatever purposes I'm gonna use them for later. Okay so for the flapping motion I'm gonna use rotating servos. I think rotating servos are really nice and strong for that flapping motion. I'm already departing from the best ornithopter I've seen which uses entirely uh steering hinges. I'm gonna go with servos instead. Okay, so right here I'm going to add a steering hinge, and this steering hinge I'm hoping is going to naturally flex. I can adjust the strength of it right here, and I'm not gonna have this powered by anything. I'm just gonna have it hopefully flex with whatever these things are gonna be doing, allowing the wing to kind of move up and down to uh, grab the wind as it's flapping. All right, so I'm starting pretty simple. This is an easily adjustable thing. I can just change the wing shape at any point. So let's just, uh, let's start programming this so I can copy and paste things. So right now, obviously it's like, it's not looking that great. It's just kind of turning my body instead of the wing itself. But it gives me idea it gives me an idea of how long a flap is going to take. But that's just a down flap. If I also program um, an up flap by giving this a negative value, a negative output into the same servo, but then I have to give it this a similar value here and give it a delay so it doesn't start until the down finishes. And actually, I just realized I want to reverse this. I want to start with an up flap on the front, I think. I don't really it doesn't really matter, but there we go. So now you can see, kind of, you can kind of see the plan here. Now, I don't know how this is going to affect this uh, hinge here, but I'm realizing that these corners are kind of colliding. So I'm going to change this into pipe pieces. I might need to change this into pipe pieces too. It actually has a pretty cool aesthetic too. I like this. All right, that's looking good. So what happens if I just copy and paste this to the other side? There we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, there it goes. <laughs> all right, we're off to a good start. We got off the ground already. All right, so real quick, I'm just going to give myself some extra weight and something to stand on so we can get a better idea of how these wings are interacting with uh, the creation as a whole. I mean, because there really isn't much creation outside of the wings to really get understanding of what's going on here. But let's see. Okay, so right now you can see this is what I would expect with wings that are just going up and down. They're pretty much canceling each other out. There's no forward momentum. So the big experiment here is these steering hinges. I'm going to lower the strength down to a quarter of their strength. So now they should hopefully flex with the flapping, causing a hopefully forward force to occur. Let's see what happens. That seems that, I mean, we went forward on our first flap there. This right here, this also needs to be pipe pieces. Yeah, so I simplified this way down to just these two pipe pieces because these were rotating this entire wedge piece colliding with the rest of this, which I think was just causing some very uncomfortable results. So let's see if that worked better now. 
<laughs> We're off to a great start, aren't we? All right, well, let's try to paste a back set of wings then. I'm just gonna copy and paste this like that. And we're just gonna move this back to here, I suppose. I don't know. All right, are these already programmed up? Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Remember when I was thinking it was gonna be a smoother ride because they would cancel each other out? They're not canceling each other out. They're just adding separate lift forces at different parts of the creation. First the front gets lift and then the back gets lift, which causes this up and down thing to happen. All right, I gave us some taller stilts so it's less likely that the wings are going to hit the ground and now can't really take off, can I? That's fine though, no, this is fine. I wanna make these steering hinges a little bit weaker. Whoa, whoa, we got a lot of forward momentum after just adjusting that a little bit. All right, so what, what we really need is uh, we need a tail on this thing because we need to stay, we need to prevent it from flopping up and down so much. All right, there we go. We got a tail and I think the tail is programmed so I can pitch up and down potentially. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. So much more stability. I say as my wings fall off and sparks fly through the air. But you saw that. Like, that was more stable. Like, look, we're flying. We are flying consistently forward now. That's a thing. It's happening. It's happening. But why sparks? That's a lot of sparks considering I've tried my best to reduce any collision spots. So maybe I do. Maybe I got to add another block of distance. Just like that. Oh, there we go. Look at that. No sparks. No sparks. And we're an ornithopter. We're flying. This is way easier than I thought it was going to be to actually have liftoff and forward momentum. I want to be able to do so much more with this. All right. So we have super, super basic functionality right now. I don't have any turning. I don't want these legs to be necessary. I'm going to try to over engineer this as a person who has no idea how to engineer one of these things in the first place. How cool would it be if this thing could lift off just the ground without needing these legs like that? I wonder if there's an easy way for me to program this. All right, guys, check this out. So I've just prototyped the system that I have a separate takeoff mechanic than a flying mechanic. So you can see uh, if these wings flap down right now, they are going to just collide with the surface and they're going to get to completely destroyed. But when I'm on the ground, they're not going to do that. So I'm just going to hold space bar and hope for the best here as I pitch up. Ready? There we go. So as you can see, when I'm close to the ground, I have sensors on the bottom that detect when I'm close to the ground. They will only do the up flap and then come back to horizontal. They will not do a down flap. And then once I reach high enough above the surface that the sensor gets uh, no longer detects the ground, then it activates the normal flight pattern where they do the full swing. There we go, where then they go down and we have a much more symmetrical and stable flight. Look at this. This is amazing so far. I still don't have roll yet uh, or anything like that, but uh, I'm working on it. I'm, we're, we're slowly making this thing better and better. This is, this is turning out so awesome. Okay, so I was trying to put roll on this thing and I accidentally put yaw, which is pretty interesting. So what I've done is I've just add steering hinges to the ends of these uh, wings and it has this effect. And uh, it's not, I just, it's the default settings of them. But check it out. Oops, hold on. Check it out when I start flying. Let me get off the ground here. There we go. So now when I turn left, you can see it actually has a really strong yaw force turning left and right. I've disabled all seat controls. So we no longer have um, any influence from the seat leaning in the seat back and forth. Don't got to worry about that. But this works really good as yaw. And I wasn't... I kind of wanted roll to be honest, but we're staying level. Like, do we need roll if we can stay level the entire time? Oh yeah, okay, yep. Now I need roll. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Never mind about staying level. I was wrong. We can fly upside down, so that's kind of nice. All right, so it's cool that I know that I can do yaw that way, but I'm gonna change this to uh, go up and down instead of side to side, and we're gonna see if that gets me roll like I initially wanted. All right, I got it programmed in, and it doesn't make sense that this would give us roll. I mean, if these are just straight non-flapping wings, that would give us roll. So let's see if it works while they're flapping too. All right, we're up. Roll left, roll right, 
It works. But now, what do we do about yaw? What do we do about yaw? All right, so I'm gonna keep this pretty simple and just add some small tail fins to the tail like this. All right, so funny thing, adding these to the tail makes it so that I cannot lift up off the ground. <laughs> I can't lift up off the ground anymore, but I think I have a, a better way. I think, I think I can program the lift off function a little bit better. I'm gonna make the wings flap faster when I'm trying to lift off because they no longer have as much distance to cover as we're flapping only half the, um, only half the radius. Look at that. And then we go into the fast flapping. And I was able to take off now. All right, there we go. So now the tail has a little bit of yaw as well as, um, oh boy, we can't lift up off the ground yet when we're facing down into the ground like that. We do need something to prop ourselves up. All right, well then let's build whatever the head of this thing is going to be then. All right, I've built a pretty cool insectoid looking head here. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, this head also has articulation up and down with the tail uh, as well as left and right with the yaw. And I'm also hoping that those, um, these are tail fins that are kind of supposed to give the pincer aesthetic, but they also should help with our pitch as well. And you know what? I know this isn't like typical of dragonflies, but uh, would this look cool? I think it actually looks kind of cool if we do that. What about on the bottom too? Oh, I like that. I actually do like that. All right, let's stick with that too. Okay, so the only, only thing really left is to give this thing some legs to stand on. Okay, so something has happened where it seems like the more I've added to this thing, the weaker the steering hinges have become, even though they're supposed to be on 100%. Like, the tail is no longer rigid. As you can see, the tail is flopping all over the place, and that was what was giving us that um, that stability as we went forward. So I think I might have to try to convert this into uh, servos for the tail because they're a lot stronger. All right, so I've replaced the steering hinges with servos and look, the tail is stabling, stabilizing us so much better now. So there are a few other things that I need to fix. The legs seem to be out of the way enough, but they uh, get destroyed a little bit. The takeoff needs a little bit more work. So check out the takeoff right now. Um, I did make some adjustments based off of the previous version, so I think I might undo some of those adjustments and see if we can take off better. But yes, the weird thing about the takeoff is it seems to want to pitch us down automatically, even when I try my best to pitch up. And I'm not sh that's why I got rid of the flapping motion on the back set of wings, because I figured the more motion we have on the front, then the higher the chance that we'll actually lift the front up. But that doesn't appear, it seems to be wanting to nose us down, so... I don't know. I'm gonna see what happens. All right, so I've made some adjustments. Uh, I've added some suspension to the legs so that they're less likely to break on takeoff. I've also adjusted the takeoff sequence. So instead of just flapping up and down really, really fast, they actually do a flap, weight, flap, weight. And that causes a little bit more of a lofty lift off, especially if you, hold, um, if you hold pitch back while you do this, watch the wings. So it makes it a little bit less jerky on takeoff, which allows for a more successful takeoff. And you see, we've had a takeoff without taking any damage whatsoever. Um, the only thing, there's some, I don't know what all that sparking is coming from. I don't see any collisions actually happening. So I don't know where the source of that is. Um, the only other thing I'm noticing that I really want to try to figure out how to fix is if I try to fly perfectly straight, you can see every single time the front wings go up, the nose goes down and I don't like, so we can't just fly straight. I don't know how I can cancel that out though. Maybe I could do that. Yeah, maybe I can give it a trim in the, in the tail. All right, I think I've gotten the trim at a good level. So if I try to like level off over the water here, hold on, easier said than done. It's hard to level off when like you are going up and down slightly. It's hard to see exactly how level you're flying, but all right, now I'm not pressing anything. And it seems like height wise, like we're keeping a pretty stable. Oh, oh, we just, uh, we got a little bit close to the ground. So the landing mode activated where the legs come out and then the wings don't go as far down anymore, which is actually takeoff mode. Takeoff mode and landing mode are the same thing. Spoiler alert. All right, so I'm gonna fly back to the aircraft carrier here and come in for hopefully a nice landing. And then let's paint this thing up and make it uh, look a little bit less, you know, boring. All right, let's come in. Oh boy, we do we lose a lot of momentum when we stop flapping. But there we go. Perfect landing. That was actually really easy. 
All right, let's paint this up now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is finally done. This thing is finally ready, all painted up. I did some more minor tweaking here and there of the takeoff uh, sequence. The takeoff sequence have been, given, has been, have been giving me some on and off troubles. But what we have here is a fully controllable ornithopter. It is a pure ornithopter. There is no thrust or any other source of propulsion other than the mechanical movements of the wings and uh turning the body and stuff like that we got our roll built into the wings themselves we got our pitch and we got our yaw all right so we're gonna take off flat ground we're gonna pitch back and give ourselves our opening flaps here and there we go it's still it's a little sketchy but we're able to do it without taking any damage which is just great and then now you can see we have a nice pretty level flight going around 200 kilometers an hour which I think it's actually like that's comparable to some of the faster ones that I saw in the uh, in the workshop video. The agility on this thing, not bad at all. Like, look at this. We can do barrel rolls. We can do loops. Um, I think it's worth. I mean, even with this, we can turn pretty sharp with yaw itself. I mean, our wingspan's pretty big, so I, we don't have a lot of opportunity for that great for stunt flying because we're not gonna be able to fit through a lot. But let's see if I can even fit this thing through a hoop of fire or just maneuver this thing close enough to get close. All right, here we go. This is looking decent. Oh my goodness, first try. I actually did it. I actually did the hoop of fire. Can we go into the second one? Pushing my luck here. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh man, I wasn't sure if we were gonna clip the wings there. We totally clipped the wings, though. All right, but let's take off some uneven ground. Let's see what happens here. Come on, you can do it. There we go. And I am so happy that I figured out how to do the separate uh, flapping sequences for when I'm near the ground and when I'm above the ground. You know, I got to try this thing. Can this thing function in the water? There's no engines or anything, so it should be able to flap. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I, can't, I, I got kicked out of the seat. I forgot. I don't actually have an underwater seat in this thing. Yeah, this thing could totally work in the water if it didn't kick me out of the seat after like five seconds. Of course, as you can see, it's way slower in the water. It works much better as an ornithopter than a, uh, a submarine. All right, well, the final thing to do is to bring this thing in for a nice, soft, controlled landing, proving that this thing can not only fly, but it can land and bring the pilot home nice and safe. And just like that, the legs open up and we are on the ground. No damage at all. Well, let me know what you guys think of this. And if you have any other suggestions for stuff you'd like to see me try to build in Trail Makers on the channel or other workshop stuff that you'd like to see me look for, leave those suggestions in the comments down below. And if you missed the Ornithopter Workshop video that inspired this one where I saw all kinds of amazing Ornithopters, you're going to want to check that out on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.